Hi guys, this is Michael from the Board Games Chronicle. Let me invite you to another exciting material about war games. Today we'll be looking at Traces of Hubris by Tetsuya Nakamura from VUCA Simulations. This is the game which follows the paths of its predecessor, so Traces of War. I really like this game and you can find a lot of materials about it on my uh, channel there will be links below and in this video and now we are looking um, on next game by the same author also published by VUCA simulation and also using very similar cheat pool mechanics while traces of war was focusing uh, on actual uh, red army offensives of 1943 and 44 here traces of hubris will be devoted to the foul blow so case blue, a plan of a German attack in 1942 uh, towards Stalingrad and towards Caucasus. Uh, this will be game based on the cheat pool mechanics with a beautiful components, which we shall see in a moment, and very um, playable solo. Uh, what I will do in this video, it will be kind of a first look. So we look at the components, we'll talk a little about the game mechanics, we'll show the, you know, some some basic stuff. However, uh, I will leave, uh, let's say, detailed games example and rules explanation for another material. I would like this to be brief for you guys to get interest into this game and see how, how nice and beautiful it is. So first of all, the box, it's not a big box, as you can see, it's rather shallow box, uh, sturdy, with a nice back, which shows, for, ex for example, a historical period, it shows the mm, game uh, complexity and suitability for solitary play, the tokens, beautiful, as I told you, and also how long does it play, 3 to 6 hours, 1, 2 players, 14 years old, up. I believe these are the, the mm, uh, proper statistics for this. So yeah, very nice box. You know, uh, Focus Simulation is really doing great job as far as the graphical representation of games is concerned and as far as the components are concerned because every game I'm getting from them, I'm astonished how nicely they do it. So what do we have in the box? First of all, we have a rule book. The rule book is not overly long. It's like 17 pages of, of uh, rules. And I already read this rule book to some extent um, on the internet. And as always, it's very precise, very concise, and you know, there are no ambiguities in it, definitely. It guides us here. Yeah. For all the main game mechanics and components, you have here always the abbreviations and table of contents. Then it goes through the units, through the armies. Usually the units which we'll have here will be divisions or corps on the Soviet side for the mechanized units. Each army will have its separate color and then during the game the HQs will have separate cheat. Yeah, so as you can see Soviets will have Voronezh front, Stalingrad front, Southwestern front, Southeastern front, Caucasus front and Southern front. The Germans will have, of course, six army, the famous one von Paulus. The 17th army, uh, this will be Italian army, first Panzer army, Romanian army, fourth Panzer army, Hungarian army, Romanian army, and during the game, von Meinstein will arrive because when the Fall Blau started, Meinstein was still at the Crimea and was still conquering the Sevastopol with the 11th army, so they will be coming a bit later. Here we have a description of all the tokens and there are actually two tokens which helps uh, to show where the HQ was before the move to see who can move uh, for the traces of war. So this is cool, this is nice that they uh, back retrofitted, you know, some, some, some of the tokens also to the previous game. 
Well, we have a setup. The setup is a little bit free flowing in comparison to Traces of War. You have deployment areas for the armies and you simply put the units there up to the stacking limit. Uh, you don't have each unit with each particular hex. This is cool for two reasons. First of all, it's much quicker. You don't need to you know, go line by line, check the hex for each and every unit. You simply distribute them here. And the same with Soviet, with frontline units. Second thing, it's enormous repliability because you can shape it slightly differently each time you play. This is cool. What's important are the locations of the HQs, uh, which are predefined and they should be there, which also impacts whom they can activate. Because remember in this game, you draw the cheats, but later on you can activate the units within the uh, range of a particular uh, particular HQ. And here are the cheats which will be there, so the Russians will have the front um, cheats, they will have Stavka cheat, which can activate any formation, uh, they, they have the reinforcements cheat too. Uh, for the Germans, and there is one of each, for the Germans there is one of each, with exception of the 4th Panzer Army and the 1st Panzer Army, yeah, they can move twice. And then, besides it, you, you have okay H, which can activate any army. You have Axis reinforcements, and yeah, the miners yeah, are here. Important thing, one turn in this game is about month, with exception of July, August, when one turn are two weeks. It's because, of course, of the weather and possibility to move. Two cheats for the Panzer Army shows that they can move farther and uh, to, to um, cover the bigger land than the foot armies infantry. Okay, then in the rule book we have information about Luftwaffe, stacking, supply. Important, although very simple um, mechanism, how we do the movement. Then how we do the combat, as I told you, I will do separate material on this, uh, how we put reinforcements on the map. <clears throat> there are a couple of special rules, how to start the game, then with the reinforcements, with the 11th army arriving, and so on and so forth. Yeah, here it is, it's described here. Then we have victory conditions, where and how we can get the victory points. And what I really like, are the optional rules. Yeah, so mobile warfare, uh, axis minority enemy, for example, Hungarians cannot stack with Romanians and vice versa, mm, and a couple of our rules which will simply spice up the game once you play it a couple of times. Uh, what do we have? Developer notes. This is interesting. Always you can learn something behind the actual game design and strategy and players mm, player notes. One thing, if we have here the developer notes and strategy, the rulebook is actually 15 pages. And if you remove first two pages, the cover is like 13 pages. Really, these are entry level war games, uh, beautiful and which will teach you a lot during this process. And then what I appreciate always in Voca simulation games is the historical background. And here you have explanation for the name of a game, Traces of Hubris. Hubris, the Hitler's Hubris, which actually fought the, the successes of the first year uh, of Operation Barbarossa, with of course some setbacks at the end uh, near the Moscow, can be translated in a great success on the southern front. So this is what Germans did in the first uh, phase of Operation May, Jul July, and then from July to November, this is where they got. And of course, here is the 11th Army, which was fighting the, um, at the Sevastopol, so technically it should be marked as besieged, and then they were able to, to, to arrive at the scene. I like this historical background and also encourage you to read the developer's notes. This is a cool stuff. What else do we have here? We have a map, but let me 
put the map aside. I will show it separately to you. Then uh, we have um, kind of a tracks yeah, for the traces of war, for the traces of hubris, similar to traces of war, uh, where we can stack uh, the units, where we have information about turns, what happens at those turns. Uh, we will be having also the cheat which goes through those turns, Luftwaffe box, we will be transferring the, some of axis uh, units. Here we put who is uh, active uh, cheat during this game. Here we have inactive and executed cheats. Yeah, so, and here, as I said, we have uh, false pulls where you can put all types of units here or simply yeah next next to this. This is nice, sturdy. Yeah, very very nicely done. Then we have a die, very functional one. You know, rounded simple functional and then we have three sheet of counters beautiful astonishingly beautiful and pre-rounded so let me come from the other side so you actually don't have to clip them yeah that's cool here we have a soviet side this will be the guard divisions and corps which will be the regular ones uh, here you have the combat factor in defense and attack. Here is have, you have the movement factor. This infantry, this is cavalry, this is tank. Mm, tanks have two values, attack and defense, and this is the movement. Mm -hmm. Okay, and of course there are two steps to the units. Here we have the German forces and the minor uh, allies. So these are still the um, Soviet uh, guards. Here we have uh, the particular armies, as you can see, the color coded according yeah, to, to, to the also cheats you can draw. Here you have Hungarian army, I believe. Here will be the Romanians. Mm -hmm. Here we'll have uh, some Cossacks. Yep. And by the way, you always in those VUCA games have two types of cheats for tanks. You can have a, with a graphical representation, or you can use simply the NATO symbols like like this. I'm usually playing, of course, with a graphical representation with a shilu heads, yeah, of the of the tanks. Then we have the activation cheats. We have a Luftwaffe control. And also, uh, I believe this would be for the uh, st uh, traces of war tokens uh, with a six command range or those two. I will need to check which which are those. Mm, we have also fortifications. You see, beautiful counters, very easily to get out. Most of the units to, uh, with the two steps it will be very easy to pound them and bring them to the to the play immediately. And now, very quickly, the player eight. There are two uh, player eight, player eight A and B. It has all the important rules. It has terrain reference. It has combat resolution table, CRT. It has also a reinforcement, a Luftwaffe table, all important stuff. Here, the B tells you about reinforcements, a bit of movement and combat. And uh, combat resolution table is repeated here, as, 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 as you shall see. So they are also sturdy, nice. Each of the players has two of them. Yeah, A and B. And now let's have a look at the maps. Let me put it aside for a moment. The maps are beautiful. And they have also some of the tables. Okay, these are not the mounted maps, but they are very functional from the thick, thick paper. Okay, mm, it's upside down, sorry. Oh. It depends on which side you you actually uh, uh, see it. So uh, yeah, as you can see, very nicely represented the Caucasus Mountains. Here we have some of the tables. Yeah, uh, good. 
Novorossiysk. Here we have Rostov over here. And if you, this is Caspian Sea, so this is Black Sea. Nicely done. And there is also the second part, the northern part of the map. Of the map. So this is the second map, which is in the north. Here we have Saratov, Voronezh, Kharkiv. So this is this is uh, yeah to the north and and east. And here we have. Okay, let me show it to you. Stalingrad. Here's Stalingrad. Here is uh, Volga. Exactly. So uh, they will be attacking towards this. So those two maps connect, and yeah, it will be taking the most of my table. Yeah, most probably. So we'll need to take care of this. Beautiful maps. I really like those pastel colors. They are not too vivid. Uh, they are very functional. They are nice for eye and and looks looks very very good. Okay, guys, I would like not to prolong too much this video. This was a very quick first look at the traces of Hubris, a game from VUCA Simulation, beautiful game, quick entry level war game, which is very suitable for the solo play due to the cheat pool mechanism. I hope to do more materials about this game because I believe it deserves it. And definitely I will be playing a lot also using to introduce some of my less wargaming colleagues to the hobby. That's all for today. If you liked this video, kindly please, please give thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content like this, please subscribe. Every uh, subscription counts for such a small content creator like the Board Games Chronicle. Thank you for being with me and thank you for watching.